Hi, everybody. Thanks so much for coming along. Thanks for joining. Um, I'm going to just do a quick link dump into the chat box for anything you might need to, to get in touch with, get hold of if you want to say hello to me um, or, I don't know, troll me or whatever you want to do on the internet. There are lots of places you can do that. And there are lots of places that resources are available. So please feel free to jump on over to those. I'm just opening my favorite app on my on my phone, which uh, is kind of unnecessary at the moment, but it's a huge digital clock. The only one who ever does talks, they're all very, always very useful. I can keep on top of the time and uh, not go too far over. I promise, Luke, I won't go over. Anyway, this is Cultivating Changemakers. Welcome, everybody. Um, and we are going to look at what I think is very important in the future of English language teaching. Um, certain other organizations maybe don't consider it uh, to be so important, but I'm not going to name names. Um, certainly not the wonderful people who have organized today's session. Um, but it's all about helping our students make change. Now, as you know, um, or, or maybe you don't, I am obsessed with the planet. Um, and as Luke mentioned, I've, I've done a fair few bits and pieces around the planet. Um, hi there, uh, Swadi. Uh, so most of the focus will be towards change making in that respect. But these ideas can be adapted and developed for other different types of, um, of change making, other social justice issues. So if Luke would be so kind, as we're going through this introduction to send out the first poll. Um, so have a quick go at this poll while we're slowly going through the boring bits while we learn about me. Um, and I'd like you to say why you wouldn't teach um, about the climate crisis in class, okay? So what are the reasons that you wouldn't teach? Please feel free uh, to jump on in there while I tell you a bit about myself. I like flags. Um, I've got a beard, I forgot to put that bit on there. You can see that. Um, I love secondhand shirts, as you can see. Nice one here. And I founded Renewable English. You can find us here. Uh, hi there, uh, Sajnit. Excellent. Uh, Fardun brings it up regularly. Uh, so yeah, you can find Renewable English in all these places. I, I love that there's uh, plenty of people in here saying there's no excuse, it's too important to ignore. This is wonderful. Um, it's a great, a great place to start. Um, those of you who are saying no time, I completely understand. Uh, it's, we don't have time. My, my granddad used to say, there's not enough time to change our pants uh, because time goes by so fast. We've got exams to prepare for, we've got this, we've got that, we've got the other, and then there's the no expertise. There are lots of ways around this. Hopefully some of the ideas today will take away from that pressure that, um, that we feel when it comes to change making and so on and so forth. So continue to drop the answers in there. Um, and I'll talk about what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to talk about what is a change maker? What can I do? And then the Q and A at the end there. Um, we can see this March, this is around the time that, um, that John Lewis, not the shop in the UK, uh, John Lewis said, if not us, who? If not now, when? And I think it's a, a feeling that resonates with, with a lot of people when it comes to um, when it comes to change making and it comes to teaching about the climate crisis. I've shared the results there. So I'm super happy that 64% of us are on board, that there is no excuse um, and it's too important to ignore. So thank you very much. Right, back to the session. So a great question. I'm so glad to see that we've got some people from India in here. It makes this first slide um, all the better. So how many of these people do you recognize and how many do you think your students would recognize? What do we think? How many of these people do you recognize? We've got two, oh, some people zero. Two, only one, three. Millie Bobby Brown is in there, absolutely right. There's two people. Okay, so I will share with you now who they are. 
There are other important, um, other than on the on the list, of course, you're absolutely right. So, of course, there's Sachin Tendulkar, the, the legendary cricketer, um, the, possibly the greatest cricketer of all time. Um, I'm going to put it out there. Then we've got Millie Bobby Brown from um, Stranger Things. Mr. Beast, the most followed person on YouTube. Uh, Camila Cabello and, of course, Mbappé. So these are people that most of our students will probably recognize, depending where we are in the world. So how about these people? How many of these change makers do we, do we reach? How many do we understand? We've got three in there, that's good. Three and four, good. Two, excellent. Oh, someone's got a five there, fantastic. Now our students, would probably not recognize quite as many. They might recognize one or two. Um, so here are the names. I'm afraid I don't have their Instagram. Um, I'm not sure they have Instagram. But we have Edward Jenner, who, in co of course, uh, discovered the, the vaccine when he realized that cowpox um, would eliminate smallpox. Um, so vaccine, the word actually comes from, from vaca, which is the Latin for cow. So a vaccination actually comes from cowpox. So you inject every time you get a vaccine, yeah, it comes from that. Uh, so Isaac Newton, who before him, we were all floating around in the air because he discovered gravity. Obviously he didn't actually discover gravity, um, the laws of gravity. Rosa Parks, who refused to sit at the back of the bus was a huge part of the, uh, the, the, the movement back um, for equal rights. Catherine Johnson, was a genius. She helped humankind get to the moon. She was a human computer. If you've seen the film Hidden Figures, you'll know more about Katherine Johnson. Uh, Thomas Crapper, who, who didn't invent, but did popularize the flushable toilet. Um, so there you go, you're thinking, ah, that's why people say I need to go to the Crapper, because that guy. Um, Emily Wilding Davidson was a suffragette who at the Derby threw herself in front of the horse that was owned by the king. Um, in a, in a protest, in an effort to get the right to vote for, for women, and which she got. And then Abraham Lincoln, who of course abolished slavery. So then what about these folk? How many of these wonderful folk do we recognize? I shall give you a few moments, three. I'm guessing the three are David Attenborough, Malala and Jane Goodall. That's going to be my guess. Excellent, excellent. These are wonderful change makers. These are wonderful change makers who are around today, who are speaking up, who are trying to make a difference for all sorts of different aspects. But there are other change makers that our students can follow who are maybe closer to their own age. Um, I love David Attenborough. I don't know anyone that doesn't love David Attenborough. He's, he's like everybody's grandpa, but I don't know how inspirational he is to maybe younger generations, you know, and Jane Goodall, yes, she's wonderful, but does she have that same appeal as somebody their own age? You know, he's an icon, exactly. Um, he's an icon, but is he a role model? I don't know. Um, I would like to think that he is but he's certainly someone that can impart great knowledge um, and inspire change. But these are the young people, our people that our students can aspire to be like. And there are thousands across the internet. I, I, there are thousands across the world. We have Clover Hogan, whose uh, tireless work has been to, to ease eco-anxiety, which is a big issue nowadays, particularly in the classroom. Fionn Ferreira, who is an inventor, has found a way to remove microplastics from water. I'd love to explain how, but I can't. Um, but he is a part of Cultivating Changemakers and will be in the next episode, which you can you can catch in the next lesson, which you can catch in a few weeks um, on Cultivating Changemakers, which is live on YouTube. There's Sammy's buddy bench, Sammy Vance, who combines kindness. She She builds these buddy benches where if you're feeling lonely, you sit there and somebody else can come and sit with you. Um, and that's made with recycled bottle tops. There's Ryan's Recycling there. And of course, the wonderful Kids Against Plastic who are helping make change 
in the world and empower young people to make a difference. So, who or what is a change maker? Who or what is a change maker? Of course, you can find, oh, you will get the slides. I'll send them to, to lovely Luke and he'll send them out. So you'll be able to find all these wonderful people in there. Don't worry about that. An initiator, I like that. What else do you think could it be? Someone who thinks outside the box. Oh, I like that. Two people thinking outside the box at the same time is very much on the on the lines of the, the definition that Google gives you. Um, so I've stolen Google's first definition um, because I quite like it. And it's someone who is taking creative action to solve a problem. And we'll look more at creativity in just a moment. Um, but it's a new way of solving a problem. For example, I don't want to buy new glasses. So what do I do? I use a jar that I've had in the past. So that's creative. I've actually got two of them. Two jars. Although in Spain, you're not supposed to cheers with water. So apparently it's bad luck. I'm not sure. So tenacious about a greater good. Um, deeply connected. This is something we will talk about very soon. And team players, because nobody ever did anything on their own. So to think more specifically about it, they're intentional about solving a social problem. They're motivated to act and they are creative. Now, please, this is something my students are like, oh, Harry, I'm not creative, which they mean as I can't draw or I can't play the piano. I can't draw and I can't play the piano. But I'm still creative. Because, yeah, making changes for good are the only ones we can call change makers. Absolutely. Because if you're making changes for bad, then, you know, that's not really a change maker. You're just the word that I shouldn't use in public. Um, so you're intentional about solving a problem. You're motivated to act and you are creative. And this, as I say, isn't drawing and painting and and creative necessarily in that way, but it's a new way of solving a problem. If you can think about a new way to solve a problem, then you are being creative. Um, if you can find a new way of not using plastic, that's creative. If you can find a way of encouraging your friends um, to, to get to school rather than taking the car, that is creative. So there are lots of different ways of being creative. And I'll very quickly go through the types of change maker. So, People like designers and policymakers and organizational leaders, social architects, the influencers. This is us. OK, this is us as educators because we are influencers. We might not have that perfect arch back. Look at the camera, pose, mm, influencer kind of style. But we are influencers. We are the ultimate influencers, us and parents. We are the people that have that time to mold those minds, to make those positive changes investors impact investors and philanthropists now if we're all teachers in here that's probably not us because if i know something our wage isn't all that high um and then we've got skills catalyzers um we've got inventors and connectors so people who um join people across the world i'm going to jump into what we can do we'll keep going um plugging on through because i'm wary of the time i don't want to run out of time before the end of this so we, there is plenty of time for questions and this really is the crux of the matter so now we know what change makers are let's have a look at what we can do and i like to refer to this as the three e's um what are the three e's harry well, that's a great question engage empower and enact now, the last one I could have put was ACT, but then it wouldn't have been three E's. So kind of just playing with words there. So how do we engage our students into becoming activists in the climate crisis, particularly if we can't dedicate every single class to the climate crisis? Because we can't. What we need to do are find links to the climate crisis with everything we teach, you know, find two dead minutes in all of your classes there are always two minutes in your class that you can have a planet focus but the start of them is this oh look at that Feruz, you my hat goes off to you Feruz, because you said it 
as I was doing it. Look at that. What a, what a wonderful, wonderful um, thing to do there. Fantastic. Well done. Incorporate the SDGs. So amazing. Now, the, the great thing about the, the Sustainable Development Goals, if you don't know them, these were a blueprint created uh, by um, the United Nations to help countries across the world um, have a sustainable future for everybody. Now, obviously, you cannot have a blueprint for everybody because not one size fits all. Not even one size fits all classrooms. Not even one size fits all students. But the wonderful thing about this, as an educator, this is a beautiful framework that we can use to get our students attached to these important issues. Not every student is gonna care about no poverty. Not every student is gonna care about no hunger. Not every student will care about good health and well-being, or quality education or gender equality. But every student will be connected to at least one of these. And as we know, they're all interconnected anyway. So if our students are interested in climate action, then that means they are interested in life below water, life on land. They're interested in no poverty, no hunger, good health and well-being. They're interested in quality education, gender equality, clean water, sanitation, responsible consumption and uh, production. Woo! There we go. Align our SDGs with our lesson plans and align our lesson plans with the SDGs. And it's super easy to do. Um, because they, everything is connected on this planet. So even if you are teaching about reported speech, there is a way of finding an SDG to be connected to that. Um, and I do have another talk, which you can find on um, uh, renewableenglish.com that talks about SDGs as easy as one, two, three, and it's a way of connecting them to our classes. But for now, let's get back to... Um, uh, yes, Jade Blue, you are absolutely right. Align both students and our own lives. So to engage our students, there needs to be an interest in the topic. There also needs to be proximity and there also needs to be connection. Now, all of these things, again, they kind of connect with each other. So how can we get our students interested? Now, this is my absolute probably favorite thing to do and it's it's not technically brainwashing it's more algorithm washing i like to call it play on words here brick top so how many people here have students that use social media um if you have a student that uses social media in the chat box in the chat box put some kind of emoji put your favorite emoji in the chat box um if your students use social media so there you go my favorite emoji is the green heart i always oh vanessa love it um covering the face there yes so most of our students use social media most of the world uses social media it's hard I, I put the clock on here to stop me just drifting into social media um i love setting my students homework of whatever i'm talking about that week so if we're talking about food you know, I like to focus on the fact that agriculture has such a huge impact on the planet and food waste. If it were a country, it would be the third biggest polluter on the planet after China and the USA. Um, I like to get my students to send either reels on Instagram or TikToks to each other, choose their favorite five on the subject and look for those. I like to do this every week. So my students are going home on a Friday looking for five different things related to that topic in English. So five vegan recipes that they might like to use or, or five ways to reuse leftovers or um, five ways we can help the ocean. Because last week was Ocean Day on the 8th of June. It was also World Environment Day. Um, so five ways we can help the environment or five petitions we can sign to help put pressure on the government. Because remember, change makers isn't about only you, isn't about only you stopping using plastic, it's about encouraging others not to use plastic. And the great thing is, when your students start to do this, what does the algorithm do? Well, the algorithm starts to think they want to see more of these things. So there will be more English, there will be more change making, and it will just happen naturally for them. And when the parents say, are you telling my student to look at TikToks for homework? You say, yes, I am. Are your, are your children looking at, are they watching these videos in English? Are they enjoying their homework? Yes, they are. Is it changing their algorithm so they don't only get 
cute doggy videos. Guilty. Um, yeah, my, my reels are full of dog videos and vegan recipes. Um, so you're kind of changing the way that they see the world and, and the way that the world comes to them through their phone. And it's not just, that's me. I'm twerking, by the way, but I'm doing it off camera so as not to disturb anybody because I tell you what, it would be disturbing watching me twerk. Um, also stories. I love doing storytelling. I love doing, uh, or cuenta cuentas, as we call it here in Spain. Um, I have a wonderful uh, group that I do it with in Italy, in Rome, with the wonderful Kids Can organization. Absolutely love them. And I go to the park whenever possible as well to do storytelling with the kids here. And I look for themes that are connected to the planet. For younger students, these are some wonderful ideas. For older students, check out some cli-fi novels that I put on on the Instagram page. Again, I'm just chucking all the links in there so you can find your way over however you like. And these are stories that can connect our students and help them get interested in these ideas of the planet. Now, proximity, find something close to your students. Otherwise they will not care if it's not close to them. Can you see in that picture there, who's that cute little boy in the corner? His first day out activism. Act can't copy the link. Oh, that's uh, maybe I should do them one at a time. Um, I'll, I'll have a go at doing them one at a time in a moment. Probably it is me. That's me when I was four. You can see me very angrily protesting. The first one there is angry protesters. I'm very angry, as you can see. Um, but that was to um, argue about fees. Yes, we will we'll post the links again at the end. Don't you worry. I'll post them individually as well. Um, that was to argue about library fees. And guess what? There were no library fees. That got a taste of it. You know, from that moment, I was addicted to making change. And you can do this with issues at school or local issues. Maybe there's a waterway that needs to be cleaned or maybe there's local plants or animals that are in danger. Um, you can even start a school um, garden. And if you don't have enough space in your school to start a garden to get your student interested in planting and literally getting their hands dirty, you can do smaller ones, buy a class plant. This one here, I'm not sure if you can see it. This wonderful thing is a class plant for me and it has spawned very many plants. Um, and outside I've got loads of plants propagating. And next week, as we're doing our end project, we're upcycling some plant pots. And in that we're gonna plant these propagated succulents. So there are so many different things you can do for things that are close to home. And then the connection, Look for inclusion, interest, and importance. We cannot force issues on people. You can't make someone care about single-use plastics, but look for issues that are connected to them. It doesn't have to be planetary issues. You know, you can look for inclusion issues. You know, maybe they are in the LGBTQIA plus community. Maybe they know somebody that's in the LGBTQIA plus community. Um, you know, spark their interest in this and the importance. If it's not important to them, they're going to lose interest in it. Far too often people get really bogged down and they, they look on Instagram and they're like, wow, this, in, this environmental influence has got 100,000 followers. That I want that. If it's not important to you, then, you know, it's not going to, you're not actually going to want to make a difference. So find a way to get a real connection to the issues. And it doesn't have to be class-wide. We can find individual issues because think about your best students, the, you know, the ones who have the highest level of English are those students who don't only come to the class and learn English. They're the ones who, they watch TV in English. They, they follow things on Instagram in English. They take it outside the classroom. It's the same with change-making. If all you're doing is going into the classroom and doing your change-making there, then going home and not doing anything about it, then guess what? That passion won't grow. And what we want to do is grow that passion. How can we grow that passion, Harry? We can empower our students. Great question, everybody. Brilliant. Um, there is a question in the Q&A up there. I will answer it at the end. Don't worry. I'm sure Luke is taking note of it because if I click on it, I'll lose my thread. Um, so empowering our students, this is difficult for a teacher and that means handing the power over. So we want to engage our students. They know about the issues. Hand it over to them. Make it student-led. Make them, make, allow them 
to take those steps on, on making a difference. We, we'll look at some project ideas in just a moment. Um, but of course, these students are 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. They can't do it on their own. You know, they can have the ideas, but they will need your guidance. You know, steer them in the right direction. Help them see what they can do, um, who they can speak to. You know, they're not going to know how to go and find um, decision makers. You know, to, they're not going to know how to do that, how to connect with them. Give them that guidance, point them in the right direction, but don't drag them there by the hand. Don't say, well, here's a list of people on, on journalists on Twitter, get in touch with them. Tell them, go on Twitter, look for this hashtag and find these journalists and maybe from there you can get your campaign out there and support them. Perhaps your students um, want a meat-free Monday at school because they know the, the terrible impact that meat has on the planet and they want that. And they want to speak to the caterers at school. They want to speak to the head teacher, but the head teacher isn't interested. Well, you go to the head teacher and you say, hey, head teacher, these people want a meeting. Or you organize a meeting with the head teacher for you and you let the students hijack that meeting. You support them in what they're doing. You let them know that you're there you are listening to them. You know, you're listening to their ideas because that is the key way to empower your students is to actually listen. If you're listening to them, they will know that they have your support. They will know that they um, have your, your belief as well. And that will empower them to make those changes. But how can we do this? Well, here are some project ideas that have been very badly animated. Um, so... Make a bee bath, turn this into a project in making a bee bath, something simple or a bird bath or a hummingbird feeder, but it's something simple that they can see the difference that they are making. You know, you're empowering them, they, are, they can see the difference that they are making. Oh, somebody has put closed captions on, very cool. They can, you can put this bee bath outside the window of your classroom so students can see that and they can actually watch this and they can analyze this. A plastic audit. This for me is brilliant. I did one in my daughter's school on Wednesday, I think. Um, and we figured out that for every student in, the, in that classroom, there were 33 pieces of single use plastic for each and every student in there. And they just kind of stopped and thought, wow, because we just learned about where plastic came from. You know, I like to go back to a, um, I give like an origin story for a plastic, a one litre plastic bottle. And, you know, the mother of, of that, that plastic bottle, when it is born, is three litres of water and, and the father are 250 millilitres of, of um, oil. So, you know, you go back to that and then they realise where it's come from. They realise that it could be around for up to a thousand years. And then they think, wow, we've got 33 pieces each. What can we do to reduce that? So you're giving them the knowledge so they're becoming empowered. And then start an eco club. An eco club is such a wonderful way for your students to be, to have these student led ideas. You can guide them. Um, and in this eco club, they will be their ideas on how to make the school better. Um, I'm lucky that in my village, we have one school. So that means we have all of the children of the village in one place. So we can help them make such a huge influence on the on the town and we've planned for the eco club at the start of september the next campaign is to ban plastic bags in the village so we're getting prepared for that you know we're starting some um petitions there you go got there in the end and these are ways of empowering our students from the eco club we can really build on that and now the last and probably it's possibly the most important. No, they're all important because if you don't have one, you won't have the other. So it's not the most important, but it is the moment where we can enact and we can showcase the wonderful things that the students are doing. So perhaps um, you want to have a, an art exhibition or I love upcycled art. Um, I'm not sure how you feel about upcycled art, but you can check again on um, renewable English, the last lesson we did was all about cultivating change makers and it was all about the 
the art of change making. We looked at upcycled art. We looked at protest art as well. So you can, for those students who want to be creative in that way, you can have an art exhibition, but let your students see that you're showing it. Take, bring in parents, have other classes come in. Um, presentations and videos. This is something we really should be taking more advantage of. They can either do it public speaking up on stage, or they can make a video if they're not confident in speaking on stage, or they can do it online if you know they're not confident in doing it face to face. There are so many ways we can give our students the platform to do that. Make a podcast for those students who don't want to be seen. They can edit that as well. And we, you know, with we're giving these students the creativity to make the changes however they want, or stage a mini protest. Here's one that we had in the park. Um, I love practicing protest chants with my students. I love having mini protest marches. Um, it can be about anything. They can also be encouraged to, to you know, this is a great way of, of drilling language as well. Um, you can find whatever grammar point you want and you can turn it into a chant. Uh, it's a great way of, of of drilling with these ideas. Um, a litter pit. Now, this is me with one of my classes. Recently, we went out, we did a five minute blitz where we just spent five minutes cleaning up. This is a great way to get students addicted to environmentalism. It doesn't solve the problem, but it does create awareness and you are doing something in your local area to make a difference. You can check out um, my daughter's campaign, which is called One in a Million, which is all about picking up litter. I'll send the link to that very soon as well. Um, do clothes swaps at school, clothes swaps, book swaps, toy swaps. Make sure you clear it with the parents first so people don't just come in and go, oh, I'm going to swap this book or I'm going to swap this book. Um, so give your students the ability, the idea to, to make these changes and campaigns. Now, I've called this a letter writing campaign, but in general, any kind of campaign. So it can be uh, an online campaign. It can be, um, uh, I don't know, they can uh, make a, again, petition. That's the word, get everyone to sign it. But the reason I love letter writing campaigns, like Kids Against Plastic, have one to remove the, the plastic from the front of magazines, uh, kids' magazines especially. It's an art that we need to know how to do. If we are going to pass almost any exam, we're going to need to learn how to write. We're going to need to learn how to um, do letter writing and, and take these moments to, to build uh, this ability. Because I'm just gonna, you know, B1, B2 exams, no offense to exam creators, we need to have something that is kind of across the board, but write to your English speaking friend. Okay, now maybe it's an email, just to, you know, jazz things up. Write to your English speaking friend about your holiday. R tell them three great things you did and ask them a question about how they are. As a teacher, that's boring. As a student, it's even more boring because what we are teaching our students is how to do an exam. We're not teaching them how to write a letter. We're not teaching them how to write an email. We're teaching them the template of how to pass an exam. And we're doing it with really boring things and our students don't engage with them and they don't really care unless we jazz it up and do something like the wonderful Chris Rowland taught me many years ago, um, you know, do it on tinfoil or, or do it on a balloon. Um, two things I try and avoid using as much as possible. Um, <laughs> do it on a glove. Unless you're really jazzing these things up, it's gonna become boring and repetitive and students aren't gonna to want to write letters. And I read recently that, you know, writing is, um, on, on the down, and I can understand why, um, you know, social media is way more fun. But it's so important that our students know how to write, but we can do it with letter writing campaigns. We can also do it with social media campaigns. Get your students to write a post, find a photo, write a post campaigning about something. Put a hashtag in there. It doesn't all have to be letters, but do get the letters in there and get them to send them. Send them to the, their local, their football team that they love to stop them using flights. Um, get them to send them to uh, local politicians. You know what? You don't always have to do it in English, but it's good to have that in both ways. Um, there are so many other ideas that I would love to share with you, but time, I'm afraid, is of the essence. My dad always says, 
Um, it's brilliant, isn't it? It's, it's um, yeah, it is super fun. Um, what I do is when I've used, I use tin foil as well to wrap it around um, for their final draft. Um, I use aluminium foil and they have to write on that and not break it. And then it looks really beautiful up on the wall. I know, again, you're using something, but you can use that tin foil afterwards to wrap a gift if you want to. Um, at the end of year, you can do a secret Santa and you can wrap the gift in that essay if they want, or they can take it home. So there's an idea. Um, so as my father always says, time flies like the wind, fruit flies like bananas. Um, I'm not sure how it's relevant, but it does mean that we've come to the end of today's session. Here are some ways of getting in touch. I'll leave that on the screen in a moment. But before I do, I do want to give you this. Everyone has change making in their DNA. It's just a matter of unlocking it. And, um, you know, you guys, you have the key and we have the key inside us. So fantastic there. Thank you so much, everybody. If anybody did take any pictures, then brilliant. Please share them with me on Renewable English. I'm going to jump on the links in a moment. But for now, I'm going to put that on the screen, this beautiful graphic um, with the QR codes for you to come along and feel free to join us. I will put the links in now individually while I am answering any questions. So 